Olympics are always full of drama, chaos, excitement, and sometimes some pretty painful mistakes as well. And when we say painful, you're talking about a point you can feel some of them in your very bones as you watch the events unfold. Today, we'll take a deep dive into Olympics history as we bring you the top 8 most painful mistakes that left athletes. Stay tuned, you're in for a ride. At number 8, starting with the board bump, the sport of diving is quite challenging. Keeping track of everything happening in less than 5 seconds is a challenge, but the athleticism is worth it. Diving requires careful preparation and concentration. However, it looks like one famous player kind of lacked in the concentration department. Fans all throughout the world looked up to and revered the American diver Greg Luganis. But Greg was a nervous wreck during the 1988 Summer Olympics in Seoul, South Korea. To many of his peers, he was trying a dive that amounted to a reverse three and a half somersault. He was so preoccupied with perfecting the trickiness of the dive that he didn't make it very far off the board. During his fall, he struck the board with his head. While he stayed awake, doctors and emergency crews locked themselves in the pool, expecting the worst. Even after needing sutures, Luganus continued diving and ultimately won gold for the United States. Pretty painful, but 10 points for the dedication. Next at number 7, the leg snap. Now, this was a horrifying one. One incorrect landing decision and he was out of the tournament. When A. Saeed landed from his vault, the sound of his left leg snapping could be heard all the way across the stadium. When he turned over, his foot and the bottom part of his shin hung in the opposite direction of the rest of his leg, since he was holding onto his leg at the knee. The audience collectively let out a gasp, and the arena's medical staff wasted no time in getting to him. After falling on the floor, A. Saeed lay there for a while. As paramedics attended to him, his leg was stabilized before he was transferred to avoid further injury. When he was eventually helped onto a stretcher, the audience cheered, and he raised a hand to acknowledge them, but the embarrassment still hadn't ended for him. Those from the Rio Olympics were supposed to accompany his gurney to the ambulance dropped him off, but the embarrassment hadn't ended. Thankfully, Saeed was able to maintain his composure after the injury, so he was able to remain in Rio long enough to cheer on his teammates and was then brought to a nearby hospital. The French Gymnastics Association later confirmed that he had fractured both his tibia and fibula. Moving on to number 6, the biking injury. Annemiek van Floten, a Dutch female cyclist, was seriously injured one summer while competing in Rio. During the women's road race on August 7, Annemiek was seen as a frontrunner and potential medal winner when the 33-year-old woman slipped slightly off the side of the road. Her bike turned wheels over handlebars and she was thrown off course. She still had six miles to go before she crossed the finish line. She was catapulted off the bike and landed in a ditch off the road. Annemiek was taken to the hospital immediately, and despite suffering obvious and terrible injuries, reports came out that she was alright. Her Dutch colleague won in her absence. A horrible injury, a match lost, and lots of recovery time sounds like a recipe for disaster. Following up at number 5, the brain injury. One of the worst and most painful injuries in Olympic history was suffered by American snowboarder Kevin Pierce. Before the 2010 Winter Olympics in Vancouver, Pierce was a heavy metal favorite. His career as a snowboarder was cut short during a training run in Park City, Utah. At that time, he was 22 years old. But he made a teeny tiny mistake that cost him his entire career. One slip, and he ended up on the ground. After sustaining a catastrophic brain injury, the snowboarder was placed in a medically induced coma for over a week and then spent another 26 days in the intensive care unit. In The Crash Reel, released in 2013, Pierce describes how he gradually reclaimed his sense of self, his identity, and his talents. Pierce finally laced up his snowboard again two years after the accident and realized it was the end of his riding career. It was truly heartbreaking. Not to forget, the judge's dilemma at number 4. American former professional boxer Roy LaVesta Jones Jr. was involved in what has been described as one of the most humiliating blunders in Olympic history. At the 1988 Olympic Games in Seoul, Jones was the youngest U.S. Olympic boxing team member, competing in the 156-pound weight class. In the final, he faced South Korean boxer Park Si Hun, and after landing 86 blows to Parker's 32, Jones lost by a controversial 2-3 decision. The Italian referee Aldo Leone reportedly told Jones, I can't believe they are are doing this to you. The park's post-event apologies also acted as an admission of guilt. Eight years later, in 1996, the U.S. Olympic Committee released documents claiming South Korean organizers paid judges to favor their boxer. Despite the fact that the judges made a mistake and cost him this match, his career was filled with accomplishments, and he won world titles in four different weight classes, middleweight, super middleweight, light heavyweight, and heavyweight. Kudos to him for not letting one unfair situation drag him down. That's the sign of a true player. 
What's more, at number 3, the case of fried doves. There really isn't a worse opening ceremony than this one. Doves are a global symbol of peace and prosperity. Their presence at the opening ceremonies of sporting events, especially the Olympics, suggests cooperation between nations and a level playing field for all participants. But things took a pretty traumatic turn this one time in 1988. Over 8,000 athletes entered the Seoul Olympic Stadium on September 17, 1988, full of optimism ahead of the opening ceremony. Fans and organizers alike sang heartfelt renditions of the Olympic anthem hand in hand as they looked forward to an exciting month of competition. People rejoiced as the last three torchbearers reached the top of the torch and lit the big cauldron. Unfortunately, the three players didn't realize that the doves had flown over to the enormous pot and were waiting inside. The supporters hoped that the doves would have either flown away before they got there to have at least gotten out of the way when the flames were set ablaze. Neither happened, and a few were accidentally lit on fire in front of a sold-out crowd at the Olympic Stadium and a global broadcast audience. The cameraman cut to a wide shot of the stadium as fast as he could to avoid displaying any upsetting scenes, but everyone could see what had happened. As a result of the controversy generated by the doves' deaths, doves are no longer included in the opening ceremony, having been replaced with balloons or paper versions. Moving on to number 2, the coach messes up. Now this was a truly frustrating one. We don't know how we would have reacted had we been in the same situation. Edward James, Eddie Hart, and Renaud Sivir and Ray Robinson, two former American sprinters, are involved in one of the most publicized Olympic mess-ups in recent history. During the 1972 US Olympic trials, they both competed in the 100-meter dash, where they both qualified for the Olympics by setting a new world mark of 9.9 .9 seconds. The world was ecstatic at their performance, and we literally couldn't wait to see how they they do in the next step of the matches. They also wanted to win the 100 meter dash so badly, but their coach, Stan Wright, made it impossible. Not on purpose, but it was still a horrible mistake that cost them major medals. The coach had mistakenly declared the incorrect timing for the quarterfinal heat because he was using an old Olympic calendar. As a result of this error, these two exceptional athletes were late getting to the track for their scheduled events. And so, obviously, they missed out. The coach's mistake apparently led to the error, which sparked intense debate. Many people think that perhaps the tournament's outcome would have been different if the error hadn't occurred during the contests. We think so too. Some people were mad at the coach, while others thought that the players should have double-checked as well. What do you think? Finally, at number one, the nap. All of us have had nightmares that we slept through a major event in our lives. However, looks like, for this one particular player, the nightmare turned into reality as he napped the match away. Surinamese middle distance runner Siegfried Wilhelm Wim Isaias had to wait 8 years before he could compete in another Olympic Games because of a mistake he committed at the previous one. Isaias, who was supposed to represent Suriname in the Olympics, skipped the competition because he was napping. Isaias' starting time was incorrectly stated by Fred Glanz, the chairman of Suriname's Olympic delegation, two weeks before his death in 2005. He was given a plaque of honor and a letter of apology from the Olympic Committee of Suriname for the official's error in 1960. That's a wrap for this video. Which one was the most shocking mistake in your opinion? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.